Hi everyone, my name is Nema Mushi uh, from ExtremeFitWarriors.com. Today we are going to talk about my client in Poland, the one you guys have been followed. Um, so far, she was. So far, she lost 13 pounds in one month. Uh, you all may think different. Some of you may think it's too much. Some of you may think it's too little. And some of you will think like now, then what's the next step? Um, <clears throat> tomorrow I will, post, I will post another conversation between me and her. Uh, first, uh, the nutrition assistant that I gave to her at the beginning. It's, we calculate, we find out how much body uh, muscle she have, how much body fat she have. Uh, for the most part, we feed her lean muscle. And the rest of the food, uh, we feed her so in order for her to be able to work out for energy because she's going to need food. So she was eating a lot and she thought it was a lot. But actually, she lost a lot of weight. And for a month to have 13 pounds, that exactly what I was looking for. And that's actually appropriate because we calculate the first week she lost too much because that was the first time she worked out in her life. And you can expect that. And then as a trainer or as a uh, someone who is assisting someone to lose weight, especially for her condition, she is a new mother, she has a newborn and... Um, you have to take other things for considerations. You have to make sure she have enough milk, number one. Number two, you have to make sure that um, she's not going to start losing hair because when the baby's sucking life out of you and you don't eat enough, you're going to start losing hair. And then at the same time, you make sure she have energy to do the workout that you prescribe to her or to him. So I have to take everything in considerations and watch her closely. Like I used to speak to her every other day to make sure, like I think twice a week to make sure uh, everything is, is in a good path. Um, one week she changed diet, like because you know where we follow, uh, they have their custom and uh, she went down to 1200 calories and that week her body refused to lose any weight. Uh, the reason why her body refused to lose weight that week because 1,200 calories, it's not an ideal calorie for somebody to work out, to live a life, especially if you have a new newborn and um, you're working out. That's not enough. First, you have to feed your lean muscle and then the rest of the food you need to work out. We try to deprive those fat muscles so that they can be decreased from your body. So now, um, I believe she's stronger. She can run more because she can run before. Now she run up to 3.5 miles uh, per run. And then she can sustain the boot camp workout for uh, one hour. And she tell me she's still struggling with the spinning uh, classes because actually she haven't done that before. And I can understand, but um, I want her to do the workout of choice. And uh, if she can sustain 15 minutes or 30 minutes in a spinning classes, she'll burn more calories because that's where her challenges are. So they're hard, but I told her to take easy, train herself slowly to get there. And uh, um, at least we can have variety. The good thing about spinning class, if you have a bike at home and then you can get a, a bike trainer, you have a newborn to watch, it's easy to work out at home while you're watching your child. Um, especially people, for her case, she likes to run outside, and I prefer her to run outside, but for alternative workout, uh, just in case she can't go outside or anything happen, uh, her life status changes, uh, she can be able to do uh, a different kind of workout at home. Let's say the weather is so nasty outside, she can't do anything outside. So today, um, I want you guys to know... Uh, uh, I, I measure, we, we, she lost 13 pounds. So for that case, she built up some few muscles. So I have to change her nutrition because before I just give her food for her body, um, to start losing weight and stuff like that. So right now we calculate different because remember she been working out, she working out four or five times a week and, uh, there's no way she didn't build any muscles. 
she did build some muscles. There's no way that we just follow the guidelines of calculations online and uh, the books telling us, but for in a really sense for us to know exactly how much muscle she produced, we have to cut her open and measure it, and that's impossible. So we assume according to the guidelines and according to the tools that we have to measure body muscles, we assume that this client already built some more muscles. We follow those numbers, we follow those guidelines, and we calculate her body mass. So right now, we're boosting up her, uh, her, her, her nutrition. We increase her food. It's kind of complicated. You may think that I'm going to decrease her food because right now she may hit a point that she may start losing weight slow, but no. At this point, we increase her food, her nutrition. For the most part, we increase her carbohydrates because she does a lot of mileage running right now. She needs more carbohydrates. And the protein, you know, we don't need that much protein. So I follow the guidelines according to the body uh, lean muscle she have to see how much uh, um, carbohydrates, she, 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 how much protein she needs. Normally, you need like, uh, I think it's 0. Point, Zero point zero point eight zero zero point eight um zero point eight grams of protein per kilogram. Yeah, zero point eight gram of protein per kilogram. So for our case, we calculate halin uh body mass. And then it's a little complicated, but to make it simple, if you want to do out there, just get your overall pounds if you're in America. Your overall pounds divide by 2.2 to get a kilogram. And then just do overall borderline. Just go 0 0.80 gram of protein times the kilogram that you're going to find for your body. But for our case, we go deeper because uh, this is our job to go to make sure we hit those little details um, uh, you need help with that you can just give us a call uh, the number is 201-873-4597 or 1-800-880-6096 or go to our website extremefitwarriors.com www.extremefitwarriors.com and send us an email, and we will definitely uh, respond to you and help you with your nutrition. Uh, no cost for that. We will just assist you. So for us, we go, we check to find out, to, to try to find out to how much uh, lean body muscle this um, individual have, and then we use that lean body muscle uh, to... Um, to create a meal plan for the individual and then we create another meals according to the level of workout we give this individual and then for that case we put two and two together we get over overall uh, how much she or he is supposed to eat per week or per day or per month and then once this changes then you have to change it again so you have to have this bond this communication this close um relationship with your client you don't just say okay you're gonna do this for a month and then after one month we're gonna change it doesn't work like that you have first of all you have to make sure you go to see the food choices that these people have and then if the food choices they have it's not what uh, you're looking for or it's not good or make them because sometimes you can see your client have a lot of calories to eat and then all of a sudden, oh, I have a lot of calories. They end up eating bad stuff, like let's say a donut. A donut take a lot of your food and it's just a donut. So what you have to make sure is these people, they eat right and they get full. They're not going to go back and nibble food or sneak food. So what you're doing is you make sure they have right choices. Instead of having a donut, why can't we have... A cup or two cups of rice or a cup and a half of rice. Can't you see? A cup and a half of rice is ideal meal. It makes sense. And they're going to be fuller for a long time. 
And that's going to prevent these people from going and eat things that are not. They'd be like, oh, I'm hungry. Let me just go eat something more. So you have to watch. You have to monitor. Sometimes you have to assist them and create those meals for them. You sit down. You plan meals with them. You talk to them. You say, okay, uh, one, two, three. Let's see, you know. Uh, how about this? Oh, no, I like chocolate. But you try to explain to them, you want to have chocolate. This little piece of chocolate probably is 112 calories. You got like maybe uh, 50 gram of fat. You got like maybe 50 gram of sugar. Why can't we do this? Instead of this chocolate, let's have one cup of beans, uh, one cup of rice, uh, four ounces of uh, uh, fish or chicken breast. Does that make sense? So right now we're at the point we changing uh, nutrition for our, our client we increase her meals uh, we increase her activity levels we increase her workout everything increasing so we want her body not to start now because her activity level increase because her activity levels increase her um, her metabolism her body there's something we call equilibrium. So her body to 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 reach equilibrium may start to, which is self uh, defensive mechanism for the body. It may start stopping losing weight because it's gonna see like okay something is not right here. I'm overworked and I'm not fitting enough. I gotta save this fat that I have to protect me. So you're not losing weight. All you have to do is to show your body like it's okay. You can let that go because you have some good stuff coming in. So your body always feel nourished, feel uh, supplied with some stuff. And sometimes somebody may change in nutrition for you. The first week you may not see results, but stick to it. Give two or three weeks and see what's going on. Then we can change again. You, they can change the meal plans for you again. So it's a work in progress. It's not a uh, one day thing. It's not two days thing. So it's something that you have to be consistent to working with your trainer or somebody who is uh, working with your nutrition or your nutritionist. They should be able to switch or to fix your meals every time you have changes for consistent two to three weeks. Two to three weeks. And for the trainers out there, if you're not sure with the meal plans for your client, please do not give suggestion. You can get sued. You can be in big trouble. Talk to your uh, client. Tell them to find a nutritionist. Or get your nutrition certificate and get somebody to guide you how to train your client to eat properly. I've been doing wrong all my life. Finally, I got it. Because I have to work with my doctors. I have to work with a, a lot of professionals. I have my uh, uh, mentor, which is a very important person in my life. Her name is Dr. Brian. <clears throat> She's the dean at St. Peter's University. Um, she gave me a nutrition class. And uh, uh, when I took that nutrition class, I sit down and try to go over, still got my books. And sometimes when things doesn't go right or have a problem, I know she'll always be there to help me, to assist me. And I go back and refer to the books and the notes to find out what's really going on. And uh, I really pass well in the hard class. So find someone who's knowledgeable, someone who knows the stuff, and they're going to help you to help your clients. Sometimes you have these clients, they don't want to participate in nutrition. You just gum slam them, give them a workout, and they don't want to, but they want to see results. Talk to them. And sometimes drop them. They don't want to work, they don't want to do things right. You don't want them to ruin your reputation. You don't want them to come at the end of the day and say, Oh, I pay there, and don't be greedy with the money. I pay, uh, but I didn't see no result. Oh, I pay, I've been tortured, I didn't see no result. They're not good, they did that. Talk to your client. Make sure they do everything they're supposed to do. And if you don't see results, find out why. Find out why. And if the, your client is not compliant with everything that you're doing, 
There's no point of keeping somebody that can ruin your reputation. Money is good, but it's not right to take money. You know that this person is not going anywhere. It's good, yeah, to keep them working, to keep them working. But I have a client very difficult. She come to the gym where I'm training. She doesn't want to do the work. She pay me money. I give her nutrition. She doesn't want to follow. Then why you give me your money? Why do I have to take it? I don't need it. Go find a trainer who will really do it. Just train people who really want to train. Train take people's money. To take people's money is is um uh, how could, is a li li liability thing. Is a liable thing. Don't just take it to take it. Take it to train. Take to for for reason for cause, and uh, this is for the trainers. And uh, make sure the people that come, they really want to work work them. And sometimes watch their level. You will know when your clients are growing. When they are growing, just increase the workout so they don't reach plateau. And sometimes you have to give them a rest. Maybe two, three weeks after you work them, just give them a rest. Just let them maybe do only cardio for like three, four days. You don't work them as hard. And then you come back, you bring them out there. So it's a lot. It's a work in progress. I don't know um, uh, which way to say, but the reason for my success right, with my clients is because I pay close attention. I change their workout frequently. I make sure the nutrition is appropriate according to the body mass they have, the workout they, pro they, they, they produce, like the power output they produce, the workout they do, and also age. That's you have to take with considerations because I train children too. So age and also um, you have to make sure, oh, age, about the, the kids because I train kids. You make sure when you train kids, you talk to the kid first, then talk to the parent. Because that child is your client, is the person that you're working with. And stop frightening them. Because some people be always, oh, I'm going to talk to your mom, I'm going to talk to your mom. Means you and that child don't have communication. Build that communication. Build that trust. Build it. You may be surprised because I have... Um, some parents, they tell their kids, I'm going to call you a trainer. So it may be the other way around because the communication you have with the child. So also know your children, know people you train, the children. Know their lifestyle. Know what they have at home. Know the culture. Culture is very, very important. Because some people have to eat certain things because it's their culture. It's not because it's good or it's bad. They have to know people's culture. That's very, very important. You don't want to know people's culture, you don't belong there. Because as you know, America is full of everybody. So you have, and people that you're going to have, there's certain different cultures. It's not like somebody going to come and say, okay, we're only going to have Italian meals, Italian menu, Italian this, Italian, forget about it. It doesn't work like that. You're going to have Africans. You're going to have Arabic. You're going to have white Italians. You're going to have Irish. You're going to have Polish. You're going to have Mexicans. You're going to have uh, Puerto Ricans. You're going to have, you name it, Indians. You're going to have all kinds of people that want to come to train with you. Like, let's say, for example, now we're talking about my client in Poland. You all know Polish food is rich of fat and milk and meat and stuff like that. I'm here in America. And my background is from Africa. I'm here in America. And I have a client in Poland. I have some in Brazil. I have, I have clients all over. I have clients in Mexico. How do I able to train those people? They reach, they get success. You can look some on my YouTube video. They say, I lost nine pounds. I lost this, I lost that. How am I able to do that? Because I submit to these people's culture. I need to know. What are they eating? What's there for them to eat? What's their primary source of carbohydrates, protein, uh, fat? What's around them what do they do every day what do they like to do every day what's um 
let's say, for example, you know, Europeans, they like soccer. They like dancing, ballet, and stuff like that. What's there available for these people? Once you know that, what's available for these people, you will not have no problem. I know, I took you from my client to all this because I'm overwhelmed. I like to tell you everything. So, to wrap it up, I want to say this. We will still follow my client in Poland. She is very, she is the best client, one of the best, because I have some, I don't want to have their feelings. All my clients are the best. If you're not the best, you don't want to do it, I drop you. I don't need your money. I'm good. I need you to be healthy. I need you to to be able to do what what can help you to succeed to succeed. Excuse about that. I always told you before I got a little bit of an accent. They say it, yeah. But I can't hear it. <laughs> Stop it. Anyway, so she is very good. She follow everything. Once she realized, oh, I'm I'm dropping now. Let me pick it up. She pick it up right away. And things have been great. Things have been great. And she realized there is no such a great thing like someone knows that I made a mistake and let me fix it. You can never ask for anything better than that from your client. And also is the communication. Make them special. It's their day. It's theirs. It's not yours. You're there to train. Okay. I hope you enjoy this little conversation. And I hope you're going to take it to the next level. If you're a trainer, I hope this will help you. You have any questions whatsoever. Any questions. Email me, go to extremefitwarriors.com, just email me, go to my YouTube channel, send me a note, uh, call us 1-800-880-6096, someone will call you back. Oh, I don't know what else to say, but we are here to help, and we will help you, if you want help. Thank you.